Hello and welcome to another EA Sports UFC 4 video and today we got an extra special banger for you as it's all about some old secrets of the game. Some of the vets have even told me you're telling them too much man and this isn't written down anywhere because it's all about meta and strategy. Now if you're an esports player still watch because there may be one nuance that can help you out. If you're new or intermediate trying to get out of the low divisions on rank these old secrets will take your game to the next level. Like always I work really hard on the video so please Punch that like button and share the video as shares and likes really help out the channel. Let's get this video to 250 likes and I'll immediately start working on the next video. I want you all to get in the comments below. Let me know what you think about these old secrets. Have you used these before or are you trying them out for the very first time? Have any questions? Hit me up in the comments below. You know I'll respond to everyone. Without further ado, let's get right into these old secrets. All right, the very first fight of today, Sir J got 13 J's in his name. We coming out, we gonna get right into it. First secret, This is that's my favorite combination, that low kick followed by that straight because that straight comes out very fast, has very little startup frames. And so we're going to talk about frame advantage, but, and then get into my turn, my turn. If you throw a strike, okay, and then you're standing, that standing strike is going to come out faster than any moving strike. Also, you all got, you all need to have some type of whiff punish. Anytime your opponent misses a strike, you need to have some type of punish. Okay, Sir Dre is a very talented striker here. And look, he's throwing this overhand over the top of my jab. And that's one thing that I think you guys have to understand. If somebody is throwing a jab, that overhand can punish that jab, okay? So time that, throw that overhand, bow, landed that right there. Okay, now be very careful of throwing kicks inside a punch range because kicks use stamina and plus the damage of that punch. It could be to the head or to the body and you're at max vulnerability and bow, end up getting a huge knockdown there to change the complexity of the fight. Now, after my fighters hurt, after I got that very first knockdown, see there, down, it's just downhill from there and I'm able to stay on top. And a lot of times that's all you need because if you're good on the ground, well-versed, we'll have another video about that you can end the fight there while you're staying safe. And that's exactly what happened here. Very talented striker. And that's the thing, if I know you're a talented striker, I'm going to try to keep you out of your comfort zone. Okay, the next fight is against The Voice. He has a lot of experience, as you can see. And I come out using Dustin Poirier and I'm whipping strikes and bow! Look at that, got knocked down. And you ask yourself, why? Am I staying on the ground because I'm prioritizing my head health over that stamina and I'm not going to engage until I'm ready. Okay, so later in the fight here, I've recovered my head health, I pour on the pressure, and I get into a scenario where my opponent's head is hurt and bow, look at there. Got that huge knockdown because I was ready to fight at that time. And that's all it takes. And then look, it's downhill from here. I never got that initial knockdown, so my head health is still high. And that's the thing that you want to do because it can just, from there, just snowball into a, vic a victory off of the very first thing that happens in the fight. And, and from there, you just get knocked down after knocked down and was able to then take the fight to the ground. I like to stay where I'm safe and this time I'm able to finish off with a nice arm bar up against a very, very talented strike. So prioritize that head help. Okay, now, border jumper. A lot of experience right here. And I, he has Yair Rodriguez. And I want you to see this combination exchange between his double jab and my jab and a strong right hook. And it pretty much did the same amount of block damage and damage. So do not sleep on that double jab. If you know how to use it effectively, it is the very the most the fastest combination and it's going to do a lot of damage so understand that whip punish right there as we talked about and you're getting ready to see me in tight very sneaky put in that double jab that double jab very strong like i said look at all of that damage that it did 
to jump his head, Yair's head. Look at that, old secret. Double jab, in close, prioritizing that head health. I'm ready to fight, and I know this is my time to trade. If you hadn't seen that, look at my previous five keys of success. Bow! Landed that right there because I did that my turn, my turn. Just everything coming together right at that one moment. And don't keep doing the same thing. You want to mix it up because you see he was swaying out of the way of my jab and I landed that hook and then I went in for the takedown. So for all of these things to work, you need to keep mixing it up. Don't just keep doing the double jab. Don't just keep like um, being predictable. Throw your double jab so somebody can try to evade it with head movement and throw the hook right into that. Okay, after that, it's just snowball downhill. But look, I'm applying that offense behind that double jab right here. But boom, I end up getting rocked and dropped by, by jumping there and Yair Rodriguez. Get in the comments below. Let me know if you guys saw that Max Holloway, Yair Rodriguez fight. And did Max Holloway win that fight? But right there, I'm able to come back with a huge straight from Max Holloway, just like the real fight, back and forth fight. But I'm fighting behind that double jab. Got a huge knockdown on my opponent. And like there, right there, able to finish the fight with a couple of finishing strikes. So watch out for that double jab. Is another old secret. Apply it. Let me know how it works for you guys online. All right, look at this next fight against Buck. 99 prestige, a whole lot more experience at the game than me, so I definitely have to be careful. And I gotta give shine to this outfit right here, but I cannot be distracted because a very talented striker, one mistake, and it's over with. And one thing that I really wanna talk about, you have to put in sidestep into your movement. A lot of people do not put in sidestep. There's a whip punish there. We talked about that. You have to incorporate that into the game and it has to be second nature here. But these sidesteps can really look at um separate you because we talked about how powerful those jabs are. And if you can sidestep those jabs, all right, then you can evade a lot of punishment. But see, he's going down low. You can't sidestep into some of these low kicks. You have to be very careful. Now, a lot of keys of, to success from my other video and a lot of these old secrets, just like our last segment, is gonna all come into play at the same time. My turn, my turn. I throw a combination and I'm prioritizing my head help, but my opponent is not. And I know when to trade, okay? Bow, look at there, got the knockdown because I incorporated all of that things at the same time. Now, here, I'm not just throwing knees, I'm making a read. I saw his hands high, then you go to the face and vice versa, you can go to the body and then finish the fight on the ground. All of these nuances at the same time when they come together can culminate into a win. So incorporate those side steps and in just into your movement, but be careful, don't get kicked down low. Okay, Notorious Boy also has a lot of experience here and I can't play around coming out with my favorite combination here and one of the keys to success in my last video circle those spin kicks and follow up with a check hook that's a whip punish now one thing to consider here you want to um, watch out the combo lift that double jab look six seven eight followed up with a lot of punches there but you want to consider that combo lift because that's going to wear on your stamina and look at there if you had those long combinations with those heavy misses that's all i need to get the slight advantage. And then once you mix it with all of those other keys, my turn, my turn, knowing when to trade, then I have the advantage. And now I can start throwing long combos, but my combos are mostly these low strikes that don't take a lot of stamina. And look, you got to be able to understand the turning takedowns and how to evade them. I'll get into that in another one. Now, I'm fighting behind the jab here double jab double jab and whenever my opponent thinks he's ready to engage that's when i'm going to unleash that combination huge knockdown there from max holloway i don't even care if i get my leg hurt because i'm up on on the health advantage the head advantage right here but with zavita i don't want to stay down here with him okay i know my opponent's head is really hurt and i'm fighting behind that double jab we talked about that double jab and how powerful it is. Well, you can actually implement this as an offense. 
okay? You got to understand how to do it and when to do it. Here, I got the advantage, and I got my opponent on the back foot. Fight behind Wow! Huge right hand there from Max Holloway. He got another victory against a very talented opponent there. So fight behind that double jab. Okay, those were some of the old secrets. And I want you guys to get in the comments below and let me know what you think about this video. Please join me on Twitter. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can reach me on all of my social media. Please join the Discord if you want to get in contact with me directly. That's the best place to do it. Okay, now that's my time. I had a really good time making this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video really soon. Catch you in the next one. Peace.